I'm not bagging on creatine here, but there's something that we should be looking at that's been right under our nose pretty much this entire time. In fact, it was even in energy drinks for a long time and everyone just kind of thought it was something innocuous and didn't really matter. As a matter of fact, I'm talking about something that people literally used to joke about coming from, well, bulls, you know what, but it's not. I'm talking about taurine. Now, before you turn off this video thinking, okay, I know the answer, trust me, there are very important details with understanding the usage of taurine before you just like go grab a bottle of it. It's dirt cheap, it's effective, but the data is relatively new, so we should exercise some caution. But that's what we do here on this channel. We look at what's new, what's evolving. Let's break it down. I popped the link down below for 30% off all your groceries from Thrive Market. That's literally what it is. It's an online grocery store. Obviously, most of us are shopping online nowadays. We have Thrive Market, we've got Prime, we've got all this stuff, but Thrive Market is awesome because they do the shopping for you as far as finding better food. So if you walk into the grocery store, you're gonna succumb to all kinds of garbage. It's in your face and you've got food marketing in your face. Thrive Market's all about getting better for you items. But the cool thing is, let's be real, 30% off your entire grocery order is pretty cool. So that link down below saves you that cashola, plus you get a free $50 gift when you use my special link down below. So you can sort by diet type, doesn't matter what diet you're doing, vegan, AIP, FODMAP, gut friendly, whatever, you can sort by that and then get them all delivered to your door in like two or three days. It is wicked cool and that link's down below. So with the world of taurine, we need to look at a couple of cool papers. One was published in the Frontiers of Physiology, and the other one was published in the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Now, when you look at this data together, you see some really promising stuff. Now, first and foremost, what we saw is that when you are training really hard, like trying to build muscle, you're pushing your intensity, there is a degree of muscle damage that occurs. Well, when you analyze that muscle, the muscle that's been damaged, and you look at cross-sectional area of it, you see, wait a minute, there's like a huge amount of taurine that's in that muscle that isn't in another muscle that hasn't been damaged. So if I did a bunch of bench press and my chest was just pumped and in pain, if you were to take a chunk of it and look at it in a microscope, you'd be like, there's a ton of taurine. But if you looked at my calf, which there's not much there to begin with, you'd probably find not a lot of taurine, right? So that's what we're seeing very interesting is that a body endogenously increases taurine, but why? Well, it seems to be in response to oxidative stress. So taurine seems to come in and neutralize some of the stress, but only in a damaged muscle, which means it is very specific and there's a lot of mechanisms we need to understand. Simply like where we were with creatine 40 years ago, Okay, so what we're seeing is that, okay, a little bit of taurine is going to allow you to push the intensity for longer. And I don't mean in a given set. So what I don't mean is like, whereas creatine might increase your strength, taurine is going to increase your ability to handle more sets. That's a very colloquial way of putting it, but let's say if you went on a bench press and you were, uh, you were taking creatine and you got an extra 20 pounds in your bench press, way to go, cool but you're still limited by volume. You can only handle so much. Taurine might allow you to hypothetically squeak out one more set. Why? Because it's protecting you from the damage. So it's not increasing your intensity, it's increasing the ability for you to do more of set intensity, which gives you more growth cycles, which gives you more potential to build muscle. So the studies have demonstrated, like the frontiers of physiology, that there is a short-term increase in performance in intense or severe exercise. Now it hasn't been flushed out in like sprinting, but we're definitely seeing it in like uh, anaerobic type resistance training. Now, what is going on? Well, with this, we can look at another paper. We look at that International Journal uh, or Society of Sports Nutrition. With this paper, they took a look at the pathways in which this could be working and other mechanisms. It seems to influence what is called cyclic adenosine monophosphate to essentially alter glucose metabolism in such a way. So it's essentially modulating cyclic adenosine monophosphate, CAMP, to increase glucose metabolism and ultimately influence the genes that are associated with glucose metabolism and insulin sensitivity directly related with a muscle cell. So what that means is, maybe you remember, remember if you like picked up a, a bodybuilding magazine back in the early 2000s, it would always say have a protein shake and have some carbs right after your workout. And that's kind of since been debunked, but that was the thing because you want that insulin spike to help increase muscle. Insulin does build muscle, very important. But what we're seeing now is that it's the insulin sensitivity that really matters too. So that when you do have carbohydrates or you do have protein, you get a finite and just important spike, right? 
And that spike could increase your ability to build muscle, increase anabolism. So is it that pathway that taurine's increasing muscle? That could be a molecular pathway in which it's helping us build muscle, but it's the recovery aspect that's allowing us to train harder. So it could have a double whammy where it lets us train harder, recover in between sets, but then also engage in a way to improve insulin sensitivity and help us build muscle after the fact. Here's what we need to understand about taurine and how much you should take and things like that. If you look at the data, most of the studies demonstrate like three to six grams for performance use, three to six grams per day. Taurine is one of these things where you may not need to increase stores of it like you do with creatine. So taurine might be something that you increase only on days that you're going to train hard. So you remember how it was in energy drinks because it was like helping people recover and it helped energy, that was kind of the claim? That is almost a more realistic use than taking it every day. It's like use it on the days you train hard. What I would recommend is that you titrate up your dose. And titrate essentially means add in a small amount, increase, increase, increase until you no longer see benefit and then back dosage down until you're in a sweet spot. So I do not recommend taking it every day. Why? Because it's something that's produced endogenously to help us recover. Now, if we start adding that in exogenously, do we take away from our body's ability to deal with the reactive oxygen species naturally? We don't wanna stop the natural adaptation with an antioxidant in our body. We do want to add things in on days we're pushing it. So what I would recommend is if you have competition, add it in. If you have a day where you're trying to PR, add it in. If you have a day where you have a race, it's not something that's illegal, use it on race day. Use it a couple times per week on your hardest days when you're not as worried about training and adaptation, you're more worried about the number on the scoreboard. Training is all about adaptation, and if you stop adaptation, you're stopping training, right? If you were to put a weight vest on and you weren't, to get, weren't getting stronger using that weight vest, what would be the point of using the weight vest, right? So in the case of taurine, it's like you're always training with a weight vest, and then on game day, you take the weight vest off and you're like, whoa, I'm light, I can do this, right? That's how we wanna treat it. So start with three grams, then another time later in the week, try four, you could go all the way up to probably seven, eight, or nine safely. There's no real, I mean, the tolerable upper intake isn't really disclosed, but I don't think you're gonna need more than six. That's where the research really shows the cutoff is. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.